what happened about the lipid metabolism in this non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. As I have so told you, the fatty acids are transported into the hepatocytes by these fatty acid transporter proteins. And the CD36 and caviolins, they transported fatty acid into the hepatocytes. In the hepatocytes, they've been bound to fatty acid binding proteins. If there is a mutation in this transport proteins, then there's a disturbance in lipid homeostasis. And regarding about de novo lipogenesis, it is the main lipid acquisition for the hepatocyte. So it starts from acetyl-CoA through melanoyl-CoA, then palmitate, oleic, and then do diacylglycerol to triglycerides. During this breakdown also, some of the intermediary metabolites like palmitate acid, they are pro-inflammatory, and then they can cause liver damage. As you see, uh, there is an increase enzyme leading to this you know, transformation of palmitate. And there are steroid, steroid <coughs> receptor binding proteins, regulatory element binding proteins, which are upregulated, and the downregulation of carbohydrate receptor. Uh, regulatory element binding protein. These, these disturbances lead to more palmitate, palmitate, and then there are the formation of dangerous, what you call diacylglycerols, which are what you call pro-inflammatory. These diacylglycerols can, by the viral protein kinase C, leading to insulin resistance also. And these triglycerides, you know, with the help of people gamma, they've been beta oxidized. But with the reduction of people gamma, beta alpha and nephil, then the beta oxidation is just, uh, a bit dysfunct. The fatty acid binding protein is increased at first because there is an increased influx of fatty acid into the hepatocytes. But later on, they become exhausted and there is a reduction in fatty acid binding protein. So the lipids, the fatty acid entering the hepatocytes, which are what are insoluble, become in itself toxic to the hepatocytes also. And as I've said, during the beta oxidation, because of the increased lipid beta oxidation, there are proximal oxidation and the involvement of cytochrome system leading to reactive oxygen species, depletion of uh, our oxidants, glutathione, and like this. And then, regarding about the excretion of these fatty acid in a very low density low lipoprotein. There is a, we need, as you all know, the lipoprotein ApoB100 is essential for this very low density lipoprotein. At first, there is an increased production of ApoB100, and so there is an increased production of very low density lipoprotein to the periphery. But later on, the number doesn't increase much, but the size of the ApoB protein and the lipoprotein become increased. And these increased size can pass the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus. So they've been accumulated in the hepatocytes, causing steatosis. Many pathways leading to hepatic steatosis. The increased acquisition and reduce removal of fat from the hepatocytes leading to this steatosis. 
Along with the accumulation of fat, there are also pro-inflammatory intermediates leading to inflammation, cell damage, cell death, and the stimulation of stellate cells and fibrosis sets in. So that stage we call it NASH, NASH fibrosis and NASH cirrhosis. Seafirm, caring for well-being.